Well guys, we are here today with the Mark 7 and Michael who you guys saw help with help out a lot with the turbo installs. We had to just say help. He did the majority of the work <laughs> when we were putting the car back together. Today that's the, that's the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. For that. But today we are back with the Mark 7 because well, I, can't, I can't use my screwdriver. I need to suck it. Same. Probably like an eight or a ten. Oof. So today we're back with the Mark 7 because uh, I sent off my first data logs over to EQT to get the, the custom tuning started on the 3071. And I got back a response, which was a little bit concerning um, for two reasons. We had, uh, what size socket? Eight? Eight or ten. Eight or ten. Um, a little concerning. We actually had some sort of boost leak appear, which... It's completely loose. Well, let's go ahead and swap the new one on anyway. Yeah, I mean, it must have been swapped. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I'm going to go pull the plug out and jiggle. I was like, that's a lot. Of <laughs> uh, now i got to remember which size is which out of these. It's a 15. What's this one? This is a 13. Okay, so we're just, uh, I think the smallest it goes is a 10. So on this one, so. I just need this tool. Yep. Pull shebang. I need that boo womp sound effect from Spongebob that I can put over that clip. Huh? I'm coming. <laughs> so we had a boost leak, uh, according to EQT, which is uh, unfortunate. Very accurate. Yeah. So uh, apparently Michael has discovered part of the issue here. Oh, yeah, that should not be moving. Who bolted the di diverter up? Um, <laughs> was it you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got sidetracked when I, I just put them in there and then I put the wastegate on at the same time and forgot to tighten it all the way down. I mean, it was a chaotic evening, we gotta admit. But uh, EQT said the, la the logs looked okay outside of uh, what appeared to be a boost leak, which we've now determined might just have been the fact that the diverter valve wasn't tight. <laughs> um, or uh, the fact, and another thing they noted was that the 034 high pressure fuel pump is already at 100% capacity, which with the data log virtual dyno thing made it look like we were in business and it was not going to be a big deal. Uh, but after talking to Matt at EQT, he told me uh, that the virtual dyno is probably 50 horsepower off and this car is actually making around 350 right now, um, which is 93 IS38 numbers, but with a bit more turbo noise, which sounds cool. Um, so Michael and I are swapping out to the new Mark 7.5 diverter valve, which, uh, has been misplaced. I don't know where it got, where it was placed. Oh, it's right here. So this is a Pureberg part. So the reason we're swapping this out, one is because EQT recommended it, uh, before we found out it was loose. And two, because I told them something that happened off camera during the install that I forgot to tell you guys about. Uh, yeah, at least I may have, I haven't watched the video back since it's like 45 minutes long. Um, and I don't watch my own videos back that often. Uh, but <laughs> the diverter valve actually came apart during the install. When uh, Michael, Jason, and I were unbolting it from the IS-20, uh, it came apart, like the, like six different pieces. And we had to put it back together. And uh, that could be obviously a part of it. And, uh, you know, so we were just like, you know, EQT said pretty much might as well just go ahead and replace it with the new OE one. So this is a Pierberg one I got off of FCP Euro, paid for rush shipping, so it would be here today so that, you know, me and Michael could tear this apart really quickly, swap it in, and send her on its way. So kind of, yeah. So we're going to have to hope it doesn't explode again. Um, which I'm sure Michael would mind exploding right in his face. Um, oh, I wouldn't explode at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're working on that. We're going to try to get this thing fixed up. Uh, diverter valve swap on this is still not as fun on a hybrid as, as it's not fun on an IS-20. But easy peasy. A lot of people are telling me to go with GoFast bits, including him. Uh, oh, but I just said aftermarket because this one's like super plastic. Yeah. Um, but EQT also highly recommends against the GoFast bits one, ironically enough. Um, I mean, I just said an upgraded one. I didn't really. Yeah, I know. Specifically, say one or the other. Yeah. Uh, Go fast bits and Forge. I think are the only companies that make them. The Forge is a cool one. It's a vent atmosphere one, but it's also huge, and probably would not fit under here with the hybrid. Um, 
I thought about that one. A lot of people had a lot of issues out of the forge. Uh, go fast, but it's more than likely going to be the one I was going to wind up going with. Um, if I went with an aftermarket uh, diverter. So there we go. Not too much oil in the intake elbow yet. Well, it really didn't clear up any space. So. <laughs> Not for what I was wanting. Well, I mean, it helps. No, not, not really. <laughs> this elbow needs to come off. And I'm not uh oh. That off. That's not I'm fun. I'm taking that off because that's a nightmare. I just need to get this plug off. However, it comes off. I think, uh. I see. It. I hope. So, you got to work on a PC and a car today. Which one's easier? <laughs> All of the above, I guess? All of the above. I need. <laughs> I have one. Business. Business? Business. Harbor Freight came in clutch with this. I bought this a few, probably about a month or two ago. Oh. Um, is it double cup? Oh, just single. No, they weren't going hard enough. I'm terrible. I'm, I'm going to edit a lot of this out because I'm not funny. But I bought this kid like a couple of months ago from Harbor Freight, and it has been coming in clutch. For us during throughout this whole experience with this hybrid turbo install it's the whole reason i bought it was for the hybrid uh, except i think i bought it before i bought the hybrid <laughs> but I, I knew it was coming so that's also sad. bro so after this me and michael are gonna go take it for a ride down to get lunch hopefully a lot less laggier uh-oh i love that for me that's always good um i have magnets but uh we'll go do another data log pull which i will film this time because last time we did a data log pull i didn't film it i was so focused on just riding along that i was you know was waiting i was like you know just kind of vibing and all of a sudden it hits and i was like oh <laughs> you know so my goal is no i don't need it i don't even care i'll grab a magnet oh i don't even know where it's at it fell in the under tray the front part of it yeah more than likely towards the the front grill but uh yeah, I'll film it this time. You guys can see it. But for now, I'm going to cut this off. We're going to quickly swap this out so I can... Quickly? Yeah. And uh, we'll go take her for a spin. <laughs> so we got the old one out. And as you can see, it stayed together this time. But if I start going nuts with it, it uh, it definitely sounds like it's got some sort of resistance to it. Because it sounds like a Cherry MX Red keyboard instead of a valve that slides open. <laughs> but uh, off camera, I was playing with it. And it actually broke apart again. So I had to quickly snap it all back together so i could film this but got the new one in uh hopefully after we tighten this one down it'll feel a lot better no wonder i was able i was hearing air escaping because <laughs> i was like i don't hear the diverter valve actually purging chill out but uh we're gonna quickly bolt this up now and uh quickly <laughs> and uh we'll go from properly, there properly you mean yeah all right it's me and michael at our favorite lunch spot got the boy here um first drive i don't know i know my gas lights on first drive with a new diverter yeah. valve and it feels way better it feels way better like i'm genuinely surprised that's all it took and uh we did i did a little half throttle pull just for funsies and uh 15 pounds of boost just like that and i was like half throttle in fourth so i mean these things should be a lot better i was lucky before to make like six pounds doing that same driving because i barely even got it like four grand um but we're gonna after this we're gonna go for a data log run to michael and uh, hopefully I don't get scared too much this time because last time I would have had to bleep out the entire video because I was swearing so much because it scared me so bad. But hopefully this time it won't be quite so scary. And uh, yeah, so me and Michael are gonna go eat and uh, we'll get, come back to you guys later. All right, so Michael and I are heading out. I'm letting him do the data log roll. Yeah. So I'm letting Michael do the data log pull just in case there's something I can't feel. I'd rather him let out of because I've never done this. So Ron's behind us in the Veloster in. If I can so we can get him on video here. He wants to see how well we can keep up with this thing. Because technically right now it's making about it the same power. Well, it feels better, it just doesn't feels, it? It just feels responsive. I don't know if it feels better I guess, I guess we'll it would. Out. Duh, so there's that lightning. Oh yeah, the same one from earlier. Is a F1 feel for you lightning right there. Don't see those terribly often anymore. For a reason. Hey, we know that guy. Let me know when you're ready. What is it? Two to sixty-five. Never to, never to log it.
felt slower. How's <laughs> up with that? I think we should try again. Did you go all the way to 65? Huh. Well, interesting. Should we maybe check over the uh, charge pipes when we get back? No. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> maybe, maybe it felt slower because I was actually making boosts all the way through. Because remember, like I think part of the drama, the drama with it last time was because it lagged so much, and then it just slammed. So it made it made about the same boost. It made twenty four and a half pounds, which I think it made twenty five before. It says three sixty seven. Yeah, so it made nine or eight pound eight pound feet of torque less than it did before in the last run. So. We'll uh, take a look at the log though and see if uh, waste heat duty's down or anything like that. And uh, we'll uh, go from there on that. And I'll send it off to Matt and see what he thinks. This is only a six speed? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. It's like seven, hello. <laughs> I'm like... not rich enough for a 7.5 at the seven speed. But uh, yeah, I think we might pull off. I might, we might need to pull off so I can fill this thing up. And then. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, we'll meet you back at the house. We'll pull the log and take a look at it and uh, send it off to Matt. Oh, you do? Yes. So we got back at the house. Ron's here with the, the Veloster. They've got our data log pulled on, as you guys saw, and they're uh, playing with inflatable lightsabers out here. That's what you want to call them? <laughs> he's, playing, he's holding it like it's a... Uh, have you ever seen Spaceballs <laughs> that Mel gives? You've never seen Spaceballs? Space it's such a funny movie, but they hold their lightsabers like that in the movie. The Schwartz. They actually hurt like. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, you need to pay extra for that. Usually. Thank Keyword you. usually. Oh, Not if you're on. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd have missed it. Dang. Fortunate. So, oh. Dude, uh, yeah. My strange addiction. <laughs> my strange. <laughs> but we got we sent off the dialogue over to uh, EQT, threw it in virtual dyno, and it made. 375 which i guess is more accurate than 405 but you know is what it is hopefully uh, i wasn't able to check out the wastegate percentage i don't know what i'm looking for so ah that was uncomfortable oh you didn't like it no okay, sorry. but uh yeah so you can see he's got the file now and uh we'll get to see hopefully some good stuff on that soon it does feel like a brand new car i mean that changed a huge amount of drivability issues i had with it before I'm having actual fun with it now because I, I was lagging so bad. Um, completely new new car feeling there. Um, Ron actually was going through a similar issue with his car because the boost solenoid and the VN went out on him out of nowhere. And so every time he touched the gas, his blow-off valve was purging yep. and was letting a ton of air out. But uh, how would you rate being behind it, getting to hear it for the first time yourself? I would say 10 out of 10. It's so loud. The turbo is so loud. The D cell's pretty. The D cell is raunchy uh but i mean it's a four cylinder uh, rpm yeah. yeah but the turbo sound at low rpm or just driving behind it is actually crazy because I, I i you had to heard it when we were coming up through here i, I purposely was bogging it the whole entire time since we left dq so. <laughs> i was bogging it hard coming through the neighborhood just so you could hear it more because it's so loud while echoing off of things oh, yeah. and uh like mine doesn't sound like that ron was trying so hard to keep up with all, with all of us like during the data lock pull how was that i was trying hard well i mean <laughs> no, just kidding no, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, y'all were moving. I think if you wanted a more one-to-one -one comparison, you should have started in fourth. What? Because he's got he's got an eight-speed, and uh, I've got a six. Yeah, but y'all were. It wouldn't be. It was like a fair. thirty You'd have roll. to just race. Y'all did a thirty roll in third gear. Yeah. Oh, that would have been a much better. Had to do, the only goal was to get through the RPM range, not it, not accelerate fast. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Imagine I was in second. In third <laughs> gear. I was in like like two thousand RPM. Twenty-one. That's about where we were. Third gear, yeah. So I'm sure when he gets his map figured out, it'll yeah, have they'll a lot fix more the lower and lower end on that. They've said that uh, the biggest change you'll feel is from revision one, which I'm on revision zero, obviously, but from revision one to revision two, and that's where the biggest change happens. Because the so base. Where do I hide this at? Is it up there? <laughs> 
I gotta sheathe my sword. Sheath is that the right the right term? They don't. <laughs> you can tell he's never. Well, you've seen, seen Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, I know. It just I know these usually, but I'm talking about another sword that I've got. Oh, like a like a, yeah. <laughs> well, that one should sheath itself. <laughs> That's gonna edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> what no. the shit? <laughs> oh, this side, look, this side lets me knock. But, uh, oh yo. <laughs> well, that ain't right. <laughs> Ron. So, uh, yeah, they say the biggest change is from the first revision to the second. So that's when this thing should get turned up. So they're going to send you a map. Yeah. Gonna be gotta do the same, gotta do another data log. It'll be a bit more powerful than it is now. And uh, we'll do another data log just like we just did. And then uh, send it off, and then they'll send me full steam. So, anyway, we're gonna wrap things up here. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content coming soon on the Hyper Turbo Mark 7. Everything seems to have been ironed out now outside of the fueling side, but I would imagine with <laughs> it getting, you know, a little bit of, uh, I guess, more air, right? If it's the valves closed, it's getting more more air, um, that it won't have to work the fuel pump so hard. So maybe we'll get to see that. Uh, that capacity drop on the high pressure pump and it'll look a little oh, better. But for now, guys, I'll see you guys later. Have a great day, guys, and uh, see you guys next time. <laughs>